God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. Welcome to worship at North Yarmouth Congregational Church virtually on Sunday, June 14th. 2020. You are welcome wherever you come from, and I know so many of you are people we don't even know. I would love to know who you are. So if you could, would you please message us on our Facebook page or send an email directly to me at my church email address, nyccrevnancy at gmail.com. We'd love to know where you're worshiping from, and we are glad that you are with us today. We are glad wherever you are on your faith journey, your life journey, you are welcome here. And we are glad that you have decided to worship with us this day. Now let us all join together to prepare for worship by lighting a candle, symbolizing the light of Christ, which gathers us virtually together. Call to worship from Psalms 42 and 43. Come, all you whose souls thirst for the living God. We come in search of help and hope. Come, you who are acquainted with grief or oppression. We come bearing our doubts and our wounds and our fears. Come, you who are in need of good news. We come in search of joy, truth, and light. Come and find refuge in God, your rock. 
let us again praise the one who is our help and our of our joy and brokenness as individuals, as families, and as a community. Move among us during this hour of worship. By the power of your Holy Spirit, turn us from our foolishness to your truth in our thoughts, prayers, and songs, and in all our living. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hi everyone, glad to see you this morning. I'm gonna share a little bit from you. I just pulled, the, I just found this book on my bookshelf that I haven't read in years, but I remember it. It's called Dear Church Folks, Letters from Pearly 
the church mouse. And Pearlie lives in a church uh, out in uh, Bridgeton or something like that, I think. Anyway, he wrote letters and there's a whole book of letters. So I thought I would share with you, this one is about singing in church. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in my sermon. We all have favorite songs in church and it's really hard right now as we think about not singing in church because apparently singing really spreads germs faster than almost anything else, which is really sad. And it's okay to be sad about that. Um, Pearly, the church mouse is, is talking about all the favorite hymns that everybody has. And I know you all have your favorite hymns. And um, I know the Smith family likes uh, It Only Takes a Spark. And I know my dad liked uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I like that one too. And uh, my mom liked Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And I know that some of you really like How Great Thou Art and others that are beautiful songs and hymns. And it is sad that we aren't going to be able to sing them together for a while, at least for the time being. But we will again, and it will be a joyful day. And we have to think of ways to sing at home right now. So actually, Pearlie is talking about a song called All Things Bright and Beautiful. And um, I think you all might remember it. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. And Pearlie wrote another verse because he thought surely that whoever wrote that song forgot a verse. So let me sing you the verse that Pearlie wrote. Pearlie the church mouse. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The tiny furry church mice that scamper through the pews, the friendly little church mice that keep us so amused. <laughs> and I went a little off on the tune there at the end, but you know what? That's okay. Sing. Sing at home. Sing with your family. And, you know, whatever song you know, and enjoy it. Sing together. Sing grace at table uh, for before supper. And just sing where you are able to sing. And you know what? God will hear it. And that's the, the joy of our singing. Even when we're all together in church, we want God to hear it. So God will hear us even if we're singing in our backyard. So sing. And then one day, when it's, all, when it's safe again, we will sing together in church. And it's okay to be sad that we can't do that right now. But remember, you can sing at home. And it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like. And it doesn't matter if you sing on key or, you know, if you get the words wrong. It's all good. Sometimes when I'm singing a song that I think I know, I forget the words in the middle. And so I just start humming. <laughs> and that's okay, too. So sing and be joyful. I know you're all probably kind of getting out of school now, I think. So hopefully your summer days will be good and you'll be able to sing some new songs to the Lord. See you soon. Please join me in our responsive prayer of confession. We confess, O oh God, that we often find ourselves distracted by a legion of destructive voices that make false promises. Surely these are our inner demons. We, we believe safety and security can reside in ample bank accounts. We think that success leads to real happiness. We equate power with dominating others. We hold fast to pain and anger as if they were treasure in a chest. We soothe our fear of failure with substances that do harm. We feed our hunger for love and approval with food that does not satisfy. Break, Break hold of, of the chains that bind us, O oh God. Set us free from the tombs in which we dwell.
friends, hear this good news. In Christ, God calls us forth from the tomb to the light of new life. The healing power of God's forgiveness restores us to wholeness. God releases us from the chains that bind us. We are set free to be children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Luke 8, 26 through 39. Jesus and his disciples sailed to the Gerasenes land, which is across the lake from Galilee. As soon as Jesus got out of the boat, a certain man met him. The man was from the city and was possessed by demons. For a long time, he had lived among the tombs, naked and homeless. When he saw Jesus, he shrieked and fell down before him. Then he shouted, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. He said this because Jesus had already commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had taken possession of him, so he would be bound with leg irons and chains and placed under guard. But he would break his restraints and the demon would force him into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had entered him. They pleaded with him not to order them to go back into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs. Jesus gave them permission. And the demons left the man and entered the pigs. The herd rushed down the cliff into the lake and drowned. When those who tended the pigs saw what happened, they ran away and told the story in the city and the countryside. People came to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, fully dressed and completely sane. They were filled with awe. Those people had actually seen what had happened, told them how the demon-possessed man had been delivered. Then everyone gathered from the region of the Gerasenes, asked Jesus to leave their area because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and returned across the lake. The man from whom the demons had gone begged to come along with Jesus as one of his disciples. Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell the story of what God has done for you. So he went throughout the city proclaiming what Jesus had done for him. May God add a blessing of understanding to this reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. O oh God, may the meditations of my heart and the reflection of all of our souls be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today's story from the Gospel of Luke tells of Jesus traveling across the Sea of Galilee to Gentile territory. Gentiles, as you may recall, were not Jews. They were not God's chosen people, according to the Jewish faith. And yet this is where Jesus, a devout Jewish man, goes to minister to those in need. Not only is Jesus, by the very act of going there, reaching out to those beyond what was commonly held as God's people, he's going even a step further. And our story tells us that the first person he meets is a demon-possessed man who has been totally ostracized by his community. In the message translation, it calls him a madman. He had not worn clothes for a long time and his fellow citizens thought him so dangerous 
that he had been placed under constant guard and tied with chains and shackles in the local cemetery away from the residents of the town. His mental illness was so bad that he convulsed and repeatedly broke these bonds, running around the countryside, presumably scaring people. This person was sick. Our story says he was possessed by demons, so many that when Jesus asked him what his name was, he replied mob or legion as the NRSV translation states. Jesus responded to this man's despair and hopeless life by ordering the demons out of him and into a herd of swine, which unfortunately became so ill that they ran into the sea, killing themselves. Our story goes on to recount how this man was completely restored to his former life, clothed and in his right mind. The community recognized that the man had been healed and begged Jesus to go away because they were afraid. They had come to terms with this demon-possessed man and had learned how to live with him. And now that he was healed, they were afraid. What they had known and become used to was no longer valid. And so they were afraid. The man who had been healed begged to go with Jesus, but instead of an invitation to come, follow me, Jesus told him to stay and tell everyone about God and Jesus and what had been done for him. You all know I am part of a street ministry to the homeless in Portland. I never know what my time there will be like. Sometimes I encounter folks who are mentally ill. Sometimes I meet people who are depressed and have lost all hope. Sometimes they are angry and fed up with the system. Sometimes there are fights and sometimes they are a caring community. Sometimes they are high on some unknown drug of choice to try and escape to a better place. When I go there, I pray that God will be with me and in each of my encounters. Sometimes I feel the time is grace-filled. Other times I wonder if God is out to lunch. Sometimes I meet people who have every right to be angry, depressed, and fed up, and yet they are optimistic and hope-filled. Sometimes people tell me to get lost but most times they welcome my greeting. Our mission is to share the love of God with people who need to hear that their lives have value and that God welcomes them and loves them no matter what. One Sunday, when we were sharing prayer and community, one of the women there thanked us for coming and said, you make us feel human. Her honest and open sharing was truly the Holy Spirit at work and a gift of grace for me that day. There are some among us who also feel depressed and hopeless at times, and feelings are especially heightened right now. One might be suffering from chronic illness or pain we might know someone who has COVID-19 or a long-term disability or illness for which there is cur currently no cure and is constantly struggling with the tasks of daily life. Another might be grieving so that they see no hope and have lost the joy of living. One might be brought down by the loss of ability to perform some task or artistic gift which they can no longer physically handle. Some feel lost and even wonder, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the desperate circumstances, life has seemed to throw at them. These people, these situations are all around us, whether we know it or not. One of the hardest things for us to do is honestly share with others our feelings and what we are going through 
And then for those of us in a good place, we need to share our experiences of how we know God is in our lives. We need to do this, however difficult the first time might be, either one-on-one -on -one or as part of our worship together. For this is how we grow in our relationship with God, and it is how we grow as God's family. Our mission as a church family is to share the love of God with each other, with people who need to hear that their lives have value and that God will never leave them and loves them no matter what. Perhaps you are in one of those low, hopeless spots right now and you wonder where God is. God is with you. God comes to you in your despair. God loves you. God comforts you. God applies healing balm to your soul. It's a message I will never, ever stop repeating. It may not be instantaneous, but the hope of healing and restoration is yours and mine, no matter what. I know from talking with a number of you that you are longing for all this to be done and gone and for things to be back the way they were. It doesn't look like things will get back to the way they were anytime soon, maybe never. We are probably looking at a new normal in our world. Things will be different and some of the new things might just be wonderful and amazing. We are sharing worship each Sunday with folks around our state, our nation and our world. Wow. What a wondrous and amazing new way of worshiping God. We are all looking for hope right now. We long to feel God's presence and warmth and love. None of that has gone away. God has never left us. God is here through it all. Christ is our hope, always has been, always will be. When my dad died in 2009, <clears throat> two of my nieces sang the song we are about to sing together. I had never heard it before then. It has become one of my favorites. Written by Robert Lowry in 1869, it speaks of hope in Christ always, through storm, through dire circumstances, through all the sadnesses of our lives. With great caution and love for the least among us, we will stop singing together for the time being. But music and song will never leave us. And we can sing at home, in our cars, by ourselves. David has posted a number of the hymns we have sung over these months, so you might sing along with them at home. I hope you will. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, our congregational singing will still rise to heaven, praising God in all things. Do not despair. God loves you and is with you always. Amen.
between us that we cannot climb over or move. We cannot make ourselves believe in you. Neither can we fix the most basic problems in our own lives. We need you to do what only you can do. We trust, or we want to trust, or we want to want to trust that Jesus can bring us over anything and everything that separates us. We want Jesus to do this, and we invite his Holy Spirit into our lives to take control so this can happen. Make us able to trust that this work is happening in each of us day by day, in spite of how we feel or anything else. Protect us from any attempts to destroy our faith or push us back to where we started. We pray this trusting not in ourselves, but in what Jesus did for us out of love. So be it. And now let us gather with souls in all places, in all languages, and join in praying this prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus told the man he had healed to go home and tell everyone how much God had done for him. What if we were to look at our offering as a way to proclaim how much God has done for us? What if we were to share with the same kind of generous love that God abundantly shares with us? Please give as you are able as we offer our gifts to God in gratitude, heartfelt commitment, and praise. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Loving God, we share what we have, 
because you share so abundantly with us. May our sharing be an act of thanksgiving and praise for all you have done and all you will continue to do for us. We dedicate these gifts and offer ourselves to your service. Bless us and our gifts, that we might be a source of help, hope, and joy to a world in need. With grateful hearts we pray. Amen. Go forth into the world with hope, for no chain can bind and no tomb can contain the healing life Christ offers each of us. Go and make room for quiet, still places amidst the chaos of everyday life, for there we will find God. Go and dare to proclaim all that God has done for you, for there are many who need our good news. Amen. Mm -hmm.